So ignore the sound of the background. We're going to read this one because I'm actually making this one. It's on my other account. Sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I have fangs in and it's a little hard to talk with these in and I don't want to take the trouble of getting them out. So here's the description. As it, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of big. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! My tooth! Okay, so as a kid, you had been bullied due to your Tourette's, making involuntary, making involuntary different sounds and movements. That didn't make sense. Eh, the kid's mimicking them. Your father cared for you, but your mother didn't. Hold on. Ah. Uh. We're trying to get this back in. I'm so sorry. Oh, hold on. Okay, I got it back in. So, your father cared for you, but your mother didn't. She wanted nothing to do with you, but still, she lived with you and your father for the money. She worked as a neurological surgeon and tried to brag this on you. But you would always resist, until one day she sedated you. She didn't practice on a removal of the part of the brain that made you feel, that made you feel numb. I don't know if that's an actual part. Feel pain, sorry. I don't know if that's an actual part, but I just put it in here for plot reasons. Because I did not want the reader to be basically have the exact same thing as Tiki Toby, because then that would be a female counterpart, basically. Oh, wait, no, this is male. <laughs> Excuse my wheeze. <laughs> uh, excuse my laughing. Uh, this is unprofessional. Anyway. Uh, when she was done, you woke up numb, and that's how you felt for the rest of your life. When your father found out what she had done, he called the police and had her arrested for child endangerment, child abuse, and an unlawful surgery on a minor. I don't even know if that's a law, but I know it's against the law. Everything was fine for the next four years. You graduated high school and was now in college. It was fine until you began hearing a voice in your head telling you to go to the woods. You listened and event to it, eventually going into the wo nearby woods. Or you need a boy around your age, bloody, and a look that said, tell no one or you're dead. Which she didn't care at that point. A few days later, you hear the same voice again, telling you to go into the woods. You listen again, and with the boy again. This time, he was about to kill another victim. You watched him, and was about to leave when you feel a buzz in the back of your head. You didn't feel pain, so it only sounded like a... Uh... Okay. Give me a sec. I don't know if that erased anything. Oh, okay. It didn't. So you didn't feel pain. So it only felt like a bee flying in your head. Little did you know, this is the start of a new life. A life of murder, secrets, living with killers, and maybe even a relationship. No, I don't want to save. And yes, you saw their name was Thicky Toby. That's great. I literally died laughing. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Okay, so now we put you as reader. So, yeah, this is a part later. Okay, a normal day. Your P O your POV. P O V. Sorry. I type my retro. I. Oh. Mm. Oh, sorry. I'm getting distracted by my TV and I just saw a cursed image. <laughs> sorry. Okay, now we get on to the story. I type my report on my laptop, occasionally having to stop to let out a tick or two. I look at my surroundings. I was in a cafe, a few people there. I save my documents and get up to get a coffee. 
I needed one at this point. I order a black coffee and go to my com go back to my computer. I open it, go back to my report. I open my book, go to the highlighted parts of it, reading the important parts. I tape more of the report on the book and close my laptop. There's a lot of eyes, I'm very sorry. Because I continually do that, even though, you, you know, we're told not to in school. I put everything in my bag and leave my coffee in hand. I walk down the street to my college dorm. My head jerks back as I make a sound, making, my, making me spill a coffee on my shirt. Okay, so for this... I'm going to attempt to do a male voice, because this is X-Mail Reader. Oh. <laughs> I'm watching memes in the background. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's do this. Think... Wait, wait, think odd. It's not white, I say to myself. Go to the woods. I hear a voice say. I look around. I look around. No one was around. Go to the woods. I hear it again. I ignore it and go back to my dorm. After about 15 minutes of walking and twitching, I finally arrive at my dorm. I go inside, tossing my bag on my bed. I open my window, look down at all the students. One of my friends, one of my only friends was down there. I grab my phone and text him. Look up. I text him. He does so and sees me. He waves and, I, and texts me back. I'm coming to your dorm, boy! <laughs> he says, I undress and change, and get changed to some clothes my style. And these, these are the piercings you, you have, by the way. The, this one right here is an eyebrow piercing. Look at myself in the mirror and agree with myself that I look good. I hear a knock on my door and go to open it. Hey, you. You know, I'm just gonna you. Hey. Uh. You know, I'm just gonna say your name. Hey, your name. Or YN. Damn, what should I say? You know, I'm not even gonna say the name. Hey, you down to the, go to the arcade with me? Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Are we walking or driving? I ask. Toss me his car keys. I'll assume you want me to d d drive. I say. He nods his head as I grab my handbag and my card. I have tattoo markers and I keep placing my hand on my chin. I don't want it. And I have one of the. I have flames on my hand, so. He nods his head as I grab my handbag and my card. I walk out and close the door behind me, hearing the click to let me know it's locked. I walk next to Damon as we begin chatting. So, how are, are you, Damon? I ask him. Pretty good. How are you? He asks. I'm fi fine. Just a, a, a bit tired, I say. Didn't sleep well? He asks. I shake my head as we reach his car. I get in the driver's side and start the car. He hooks his phone up to the Bluetooth and puts some music on. I knew the way to the arcade and didn't need directions. <clears throat> Sorry. So I pulled out of the parking lot and drive down to the arcade. <laughs> Only after ten minutes we arrive at the arcade. Go to the woods. I hear as we park and get a get out. I ignore it again. And walk up to the entrance, tripping over the curb and falling. You okay? Damon asks. I get up and nod my head. Remember, I don't feel pain, dummy. I say, flicking his head. He laughs as we enter. We go up to the counter and get a play card with around $200 each. <laughs> okay, enough to last us all day. Um, just to be clear. You have a job in this. I just haven't written any chapters with it, with the job in it yet. Oh.
Sorry. Okay. Uh, where was, uh... Okay, so your job in this... Uh... Shit. It's a good job. I haven't come up with a job yet, so you know what? You guys help me. Okay. We both go to a race car game and swipe the card. I end up winning and getting the tickets on the card. He gets up and pulls me to a go-kart activity they have. We go into the adult line, which is pretty short and weighted. The line was outside near some woods. There are woods literally everywhere around your town, by the way. I look out under the tree line. My head twitches to the side and as I look around the trees. My eyes land on a tall figure. It was blurry due to the trees being far away, so I couldn't make out any features. As a matter of fact, it didn't look like it had any features. I felt as though I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I'm snapped out of my gaze by a, I'm snapped out of my gaze by this gaze of the thing by Damon shaking my shoulder. Come on, we're next, he says. I look back at the tree line to see the thing had vanished. Y yeah, yeah, I'm coming. I say walking with him. We end the cars, testing the exhaust before strapping in. We look at the, look at the lights uh, as it was on red. I look around and see it was just me and him racing. <laughs> the light eventually went green and we zoomed off, turning corners and passing each other sometimes. Damon ends up winning the race and I congratulate him. We then go to the actual arcade games and try some ski ball. After ski ball, I'm a tooth. No. Okay, I took them out. <coughs> After ski ball, we went to do a laser tag for about an hour. After laser tag, we spent the next three hours in the back at the arcade games. To finish the day off, me and him go upstairs to go roller skating. This is basically uh, shit. What's the name of that place? What's the name of that place? Hold on. I'm gonna go ask my mom. Hold on. Okay, it's called the Sports Emporium. If you guys don't know what that is, look it up. Okay, where was I? We both get on rollerblades and put them on. He was a bit unbalanced, so I was very balanced. Me being on a school hockey team in high school. He stumbles and grabs onto me, almost falling. I held onto his waist, hoisting him up a bit. Hold onto his side and go under the wall. How are you so good at this? Damon asks. Hockey team. I can actually skate backwards, I say. He slips on the wheels and falls over, laughing after. I join him in the laughter. I help him up, holding onto his side, helping him skate. I love Damon like a brother, so I'd usually help help him like an older brother. By the way, the reader is about 21. You'll find that out later, and Damon is 20. So technically, you would be the older brother. I hope you female watchers are enjoying this as well. And if I have any male viewers, hope you guys are enjoying. I'm going to post this on my Alba channel, because... Why the hell not? Because I do more creepypasta stuff there. I still have yet to do a creepypasta audio, and that's because I am feeling I'm having a lack of interest. Not really interest. I don't really have, an I I have, I don't really have any ideas. So, guys, I need you to give me a scenario. They would be short little scenarios. I would do like two to three in a video. So, please give me some scenarios. Okay. Now, where was I? Some people mistake us as a couple. Must because we look, look nothing alike. I had, I had hair length, hair color hair. And he had blonde hair reaching to his shoulders. Damon smiled at me as I helped him around the rink. About an hour later, we fit. Fit? 
Oh, we get off the rink and return the skates. Walk out of the arcade and go to the car. I look at the woods again out of curiosity. I see the thing again. Blink, and it's gone. I shake it off as a hallucination and begin to drive back to the dorm. We arrive back at the college dorms. It was late, about 9 p.m. His dorm was on the other side of the college, so I let him sleep in my room. Uh, mm, excuse me. <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, I let him sleep in my room. I open the door, letting Damon in, setting my bag down, taking off my shoes. I take my hoodie and shirt off, getting ready for bed. I dust Damon some extra clothes to sleep in. I put on some black basketball shorts and a blue tank top. I gave Damon a pair of gray basketball shorts and a black tank top. I go over to my desk and take my laptop out, plugging it in to charge. I go over to my nightstand to plug my phone. Plug in my phone. Damon has already gotten into bed, claiming the right side of the bed. I change to the other side. I slide to the other side of the, by the wall, closing my eyes as we slowly fall asleep. And yes, you have a corner bed. I wake up to Damon snoring. Typical. I slide out from the bed and change into an emo outfit. Still have piercings in, by the way. I put on a few chains on the belt loops and grab my phone, leaving the room, letting Damon sleep in. I walk down the dorm hallways, seeing a few students out and about, talking to their friends. I pull out my phone, scroll through my contacts, tapping my father's. Oh wait, what's the name of this one? Oh, the beginning. Sorry. <sighs> Let me take a deep breath. I pull out my phone and scroll through my contacts, tapping my father's and pressing, pressing the call button. He answers after the first two rings. Hello? Hey, Dad. Are you, you free later for lunch? It's been a while since we, we we last saw each other, I say. Yeah, I'm free. Should I pick you up? Dad, I'm I'm 21. I can drive. I'll pick you up at 1, I say. Okay, see you then. Oh, wait. He says before hanging up. I get into my own car, a black Chevy Impala. I start the cor core. It's because my brain thinks faster than most. And I was going to say I start the cord because reasons. I think kind of fast. That explains my sloppy handwriting. Maybe. I don't know yet. I pull out the car and hook up my phone to the aux cord, putting on some rap music. I pull out and drive down the street, tapping the steering wheel to the beat of the song. I drive to an old abandoned building and go inside, looking around for a good spot. I find it and take out my bag, setting cans of spray paint on the floor. I put on a mask and begin to make some art. And that's what you make. I found these pictures off of Google. <coughs> mm, ow! What's that? I just felt a weird pinch on my leg. Okay, four hour time skip. I take the mask off and step back. Am I even recording? Okay, yes, I am. <laughs> I didn't know if I was or not. I take off the mask and step back, looking at the wolf. I snap a picture of it and pack my stuff up. Check my phone to see it was almost 11.30. You're picking your father up early, by the way, but I kind of forgot... That you were that you were supposed to be picked up at twelve or one, and I put it as twelve. So I run to my car. Oh, my back hurts. Mm. I'm laying on my bed, by the way. So <sighs> I'm getting so sidetracked.
I am very sorry. No wonder these reading videos are really long. This is my first reading video, so. That hurt. Uh, I run to my car and put the stuff in the trunk. I get in and drive to my old house. After 20 minutes, I arrive at my father's house. I get my phone out and text him, saying I was here. Five minutes later, he comes out of the house, smiling at me. He gets in the passenger side of the car, looking at me before giving me a hug. I, either, I eagerly hug back, and I nod a sigh of happiness. I turn my music down as so we're speaking. Hey, Dad, I say, smiling. Hey, son, it's been a while, hasn't it? He says. I nod my head and start the car. Have any anywhere in particular you, you want to go? I ask him. He thinks for a minute bes before speaking. There's this restaurant nearby. I hear it's pretty good. How about there? Put in the directions, and I say. He does so and gives me the. And he does. So, he does so, and the phone gives me the directions. Small time skip. We pull up to the restaurant and get out. Hold on, I say to my father. He turns to me, tells us his letter, knowing what I was about to do. <laughs> yes, the reader smokes. <laughs> because why the hell not? He turns to me and tells me his letter, knowing what I was about to do. I take out the box of cigarettes and take one out. I let him begin to smoke. I swear, you're going to be the death of me. He says, I toss his letter back. Nah, I say smiling. He laughs and gets on his phone. After five minutes, I finish my cigarette, telling my dad that we can go inside. Sorry if you hear this in the back. That, that's the headboard. Because whenever I move, since my bed is so close to the wall, it hits it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting sidetracked again. But that was really cute. It was entire school learned sign language to work. Welcome first deaf student. That's cute, actually. Okay. I am going to put on some music. Okay, hold on. Let me pause the recording quickly. I think I only I can hear it. I don't know. You guys can probably hear it. I put it on as an animation. Mostly because I'm trying to figure out the movements. Because I also have an animation channel. Oh, okay. That was cool. Anyway. Uh, so my dad, we can go on the side. We are asked how many persons, and we say two. The female leads us to the table, and we sit down. We both look at the menu, looking for a drink. Hey, how about this? He says, putting on an alcoholic drink. Again, you're 21. Almost 22. Blue, blueberry lemon drop. That sounds good, I say. Waitress comes over to us. Can I start you off with anything to drink? My father orders his first. Can I get a strawberry margarita? She nods her head and writes his order down. She looks at me and asks my order. Oh, come on! This thing really decides to stall now. Sorry, I was just humming Lone Digger. Can can I get the blueberry e 
Lemon Drop? I asked. I looked young to be 21. So, of course, she asked for my... For the, 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 she asked for some identification. And take it out of my wallet and hand it to her. She checks it and hands it back to me. <gasps> she writes it down my order and walks away. We look through the menu and find something to eat. My father said it settled on a sirloin steak, and I settled on a burger. She comes back with our drinks and asks if we're ready to order. My father says yes, and she takes out her notepad. I'm turning this off, because... No, I'm just going to turn it on really low. Here we go. I can... I have air. Yeah, I have air, and I can hear the music now. That's a lot better. Where was I? Okay. I'll take the sirloin steak with the side of a baked potato. Which is actually what my mom usually gets, he says. She writes it down. And for you, she asks me. I know I would take and stutter a lot in stressful situations, so I mentally prepare myself for this. Social anxiety is great, isn't it? Okay. Ignore that in the back if you could hear it. <laughs> I just wanted to listen to this as I read. Okay. Uh, uh, social anxiety is great, isn't it? I'll have the, 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 the. I stopped trying to talk and point at the burger. I wanted. She nods her head and smiles, writing it down. She takes our menus and leaves to wait for the order to be done. I take, I take, a, I take a sip of my drink, and my dad begins to strike up a conversation with me. So, how's college so far? He asks. It's a. It's okay, I guess. Or how's college so far? They're okay, I guess. <laughs> The the students are nice, a nice ace. What about your studies? You're starting to become a a CC, right? He asks. CC equals career choice. <laughs> Why is my AR itchy? That's weird. Uh, I'm trying to find a comfortable position. Am I recording? Yes, I am. I have no clue how long I've been reading this, but it's probably been a while, and we're only on the second chapter. And there's like two more, and the I know you I'm still working on, and I'm not going to show it. Okay. Y yeah, yeah. Stud studies are going well. Damon has been a real help help with it as well. I say, Damon, isn't that a friend of yours? He asks. Yeah, one of my only friends. He's like a brother to me. Well, I'd like to meet him. He says, smiling. We chat for the next twenty minutes before our food shows up. As I begin to eat, and, uh, I didn't stop there. I didn't pause. As our food shows up. Begin to eat as we still talk. Sorry. Sorry. I am, I swear I'm not talking to myself. Am I? What is wrong with me? I'm like, I'm saying sorry to myself. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
Um, just seeing this title of the song reminded me of something. I'm taking French. Uh, we chat for the next 20... Okay. Yeah. I cannot survive. I can't survive. Oh, this is actually perfect. I am getting so distracted by this. I am sorry. You know what? I'm putting my phone in front of it to block it. <sighs> no wonder. Oh, come on. My phone's at 16% too. That's great. Yeah, one of my only friends. And uh, After we finish our food, wait. I begin to eat as we still talk. Okay, you know what? I'm going to watch this. Hold on. Good. I'm back. I see that. <laughs> okay. Uh, tch, tch, tch. The waitress comes over and takes our plates. Is that going to be all for you two today? Yes, that'll be all. My dad says, handing us. She hands us the bill, and I pay for it. It was my treat after all. We both get up and leave, having having to drop off my dad back at home. But something felt off. Like, I was being watched. I look around as I play with my own lighter. I got it out of the glove box. Look to see the faceless thing again. Dad. Hey, Dad. Wait here, I say. He gets out. He gets in the car. Gets on his phone. As I, sl I slowly walk out to the thing. With each step, a buzzing sound was growing louder in the back of my head. The closer I got, I truly... He, um, the closer I got, I realized he truly didn't have any face. Okay, you're hallucinating. You're hallucinating. This this isn't re real. I say, rubbing my eyes. I look back up and see nothing. I still felt uneasy. Almost as if something bad was going to happen. I go back to the car and get in, still playing with my lighter. I start the car and drive out. Taking the high, highway home, I look around and my eyes land on a red pickup truck. The man driving suddenly swerves, crashing into us and flipping the car. I remain completely awake during this. My father falling unconscious. The car caught fire as I grabbed my father, pulling him out of the wreckage. I get out and walk out of the flames, holding my dad on my back. He's only like 160 pounds. A bunch of people got out of their cars, and I look at the car. It's 911 soon arrives. An ambulance arrives just as I begin to see black and pass out. Before going completely unconscious, I hear a voice. You know where to go. Five hour time skip. I wake up in a hospital gown and bandages on the left side of my face. On the left side of my head, sorry. I. Okay, yeah, it's right there. Ah, oh, good, you're awake. How do you feel? The doctor asks me. I feet feel fine. Where's my d dad? I asked. I asked. The doctor, he lowers his head. The crash broke one of his ribs, puncturing his heart. He died instantly, he says. I lowered my head, wanting to cry. You didn't, surf you didn't suffer any internal damage. 
but a few shards of glass did end up cutting your upper lip. You're able to go home today if you wish, he says. I nod my head and get out of the bed. I go to the bathroom and change. Mm. Sorry. I nod my head and get out of the bed. I go to the bathroom and change into my normal clothes. I change and begin to cry. He's really gone. I was holding his dead body. I look at the bandages and take them off. Now, this next picture is of one of my OCs who was crying. I drew him crying. But I wanted to use the scars again. And he said upper lip. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna grow side bangs. <laughs> the scars you have. The scars you have. That's one of my OCs, but I wanted to use the scars again. A tipped ear is something you already had. That's one of them. Small amount of blood spilling. I wet my tears and leave the bathroom. Sorry. I just skip an ad. I grab my stuff. and Grabbing my stuff. <laughs> grabbing my stuff and, and leave to check out at the hospital. Before I do, they... I asked if they had any of my dad's belongings. The one at the front desk said they have a bracelet, a ring, and a necklace of his. They said I could have them and give them to me. I smile and check out. But I remember the car. Definitely total beyond repair. Well, no shit, that thing caught on fire. I called Damon. Damon. I act, it autocorrected to Damien, so. I'm not concerned by my now broken screen. I call him. I call him, and he answers in a panicked voice. Dude, are you okay? I heard what happened, and I'm coming to the hospital, he says quickly. Yeah, I'm fine. I just need, need you to p p pick me up. I say, my text was coming a bit more frequent. I'm adding some words, if I feel as though it needs it, by the way. Yeah, I'll be there soon, he says before hanging up. I sit down on the ground and open my texts and scroll through them to see a few acquaintances of mine in there. They were all worried. They were Damon's fr They were friends of Damon's and knew me as his non-related related brother. Some were saying, are you okay? Or what happened? I look up at them. I look at them for a bit before I hear, hear a car pull up. I look up to see Damon's car. I get up as he runs to me. <sighs> I don't know why. I just yawned. I don't know where that came from. Mm, sorry. I get up as he runs to me. He hugs me tightly, not wanting to let me go. Oh, oh God, I'm so glad you're okay, he says, looking at the scars. D do you think we think we c c could stop at the s store? Wait. Okay, I just had to mouth that. <laughs> I'm listening to uh, Wolf in Sheep's Clothing. But I set it off. So, uh, do you think we could stop at the s s store? I need to buy something. Something. I say. He nods his head and walks to the car with me behind him. We drive down to the store and get out. I walk in and go into an aisle finding a mask to temporarily use. It looks like that. Wait a sec. That would actually cover that. So, I guess you won't have side bangs then. Uh, it looks like this. I get three off the rack and go to the checkout. I hand to the female who is working. She says nothing and scans them, handing me the bag. I thank her and go to the bathroom to put one on. I do so, leave the bathroom, and go back to the car. We drive to the dorms and I get out. A few teachers and students who were worried about me.
Yeah, I can do that sound. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to watch this. I just missed a call from somebody, but I'm not going to answer it. I turned off the music, by the way. Uh... They ask questions and I answer them for the next 20, 10 minutes. After that, I go to my dorm, asking Damon to sleep with me tonight. He agrees and lets me have the wall side, knowing that I like that side. I get changed and got into bed, holding on to Damon for safety. He didn't mind seeing how, as he returned the hug as we fall asleep like that. Tomorrow. That was a long chapter. Yeah. The, the word count ha always in this usually has over a thousand words. Meaning. Mm. Sorry. I slowly w slowly waking up, I sit in up into an empty bed. I'm looking around, I see a note. I pick it up and ran aloud to myself. Te teachers decided to cancel cl classes today. I went out and we'll, we'll be back later t tonight. Your brother, Damon. I read aloud. I get up and get changed, putting on my mask. That's what you wear. You always wear your mask in public, by the way. Walk out and go behind the college, remembering the words. Go to the woods. I decide to follow the instructions and walk into them. Looking around, I find nothing. Go farther. I follow the command and go farther into the woods, my head twitching a bit. I make my way through the woods, stopping when I hear a very nearby scream. Curiosity got the best of me, and I went to go investigate the sound, as all white people do. I followed the scream to find a male around the height of five foot six, pinning a female against a tree. I decided to stick around just to see what would happen. And something definitely did happen. He took a hatchet from his belt, throwing the female down on the ground, swinging it down on her leg. She screams as, she, as he begins cutting her limbs off, eventually silencing her by splitting her head open. I was pretty impressed by his killing. I turn to leave, but step on a few twigs, gaining the male's attention. Who, who's there? The male says. I turn around, look at, and look at him. He looks at me and speaks. Come out. He says, his head twitching. I come out from behind the tree. My tick's becoming a, mo a bit more frequent. He comes closer to me, holding his hatchet. My tick's become more vocal, making a semi-loud sound. This set him off, and he begins twitching. I took this opportunity to run, but I'm stopped, crashing into a large person. I fall to the ground, looking up at the figure to see it was a faceless being from before. Oh, shit. I mutter. The being kneels down to my level, as if he was going to talk to me. Don't be afraid, child. We won't hurt you. I hear it say. I back up against a tree, not wanting to die today. <laughs> The male from before walks up to the tall being, standing by its side. I twitch a few times before speaking. Who uh, uh, are you? Y you? I asked, terrified. I stand up and lean against the tree, making sure I had an escape route if I had to run. You will find that out soon. For now, the creature says. Hello? I just heard footsteps. I'm not home alone, but it was quiet. Uh, the creature says, I feel the bu same buzzing from before in my head and begin to see black. The last thing I see before blacking out is a male walking up to me. Time skip. Wake up in my room. Damon on his computer. How l long have I been out? I ask aloud. You haven't woken up at all today. He says, Yes, I d did. I went into the... I cut myself off, not wanting to tell him what I witnessed. What? N nothing I say, getting out of bed. I go over to him and hung him from behind. I say a breath of relief, not wanting to leave his side. I look over his shoulder and look at the computer screen. W what are you doing? I ask. Just a bit of work, he says, looking up at me. Look at the time on his computer. Holy crap! It was 8.45 p.m. I was still in my clothes from before, and so I was ready to go out. I'll be back soon, I say, grabbing my phone, bag, and run out the door. Wait! I hear Damon yell as I run. 
I ran out of the doors of the college and into the back of it, running into the woods. I kept running, trying to find the spot from before. I eventually reached it and used my flashlight to look on my phone to look around. I shined something. I shined it around before it reflects off of something. I smile and go over to it and pick it up. That's a necklace. I say, putting it on. I was about to leave before I spot the large hatchet. I recognized it as a boy from before. I pick it up and examine it. It still had blood on it before, making a shiver run down my spine. I walk deeper into the forest, searching for the mail, eventually coming to an area with dead trees. I walk towards them, crossing some sort of invisible line. I feel the air shift, and the air became thicker, making me have to take off my mask to breathe properly. I walk through the dead trees, making my way to seemingly nowhere. He has to be in here, I mutter to myself. As if on cue, I spot a large mansion. My tooth came out. Well, I'd say fang, but whatever. I blink a few times. What the fuck is a mansion doing in the middle of the woods? I ask aloud. I walk to the edge of the tree line and leave the hatchet there, feeling somewhat unsafe. I run the other way, my vision beginning to blur again from the air. I collapse on the ground, coughing a bit. I can look around to see the tall figure from before. You shouldn't be here, it says. I, I, I was just giving it the back, I say, trying to stay conscious. It's fine for now, but do not come here until it is time. It says before I black out once again. Short time skip. I wake up to a flashlight shining in my face. I cover my eyes. I cover my eye. I cover my eyes and look up at who it was. It was Damon. He says nothing, picks me up, and takes me inside, bringing us to my bed where I soon fall asleep. Then I got a bit lazy. Word count exactly one thousand. Hold on, who commented? Papa Bowser. It's Paper Bowser, not Papa. <laughs> I feel stupid. Feel free to comment that. Just a spam comment, Papa Bowser. <laughs> spam comment, hashtag Papa Bowser. <laughs> In the comments. <laughs> Please, I beg of you. It's almost been a year since your first encounter with the faceless being, which you already know as Slenderman. He hasn't told you that yet, but whatever. I look around, I would look around his room. Wait, okay, so you know, I look around my brother's room, searching for something I left when, left there, when I see something out of the corner of my eye move. When I see something out of the corner of my eye, I see him move. Ah, you're up. They say, looking at him. Yeah, I'm up. And he says, why did you run off like that? I ask. I ask, walking back over the bed. I dropped a dad's necklace, and I was, was get in the wood it, as I was in the woods. I need, need, needed it back. He says, twitching. I give another just a nod before getting up in the bed. Well, in any case, get up and get dressed. Class starts in 30 minutes. This seemed to fully wake him up. Shit, why didn't you warn, why didn't you wake me? He says, freaking out while trying to get changed. You look dead, bro. And you still do. You need to sleep tonight. I say, tossing him his shoes. He goes over to the bathroom and looks in the mirror. He seemed a bit shocked at his appearance. Damn, dude, I d d do look dead. Whoever is walking around, please stop. You're scaring me. <laughs> I'm charging my headphones and refuse to charge my phone until I've read this chapter. Because after that, the I Know You chapter is coming up. And I'm not done with it. So yeah, I'm not going to read that one. I do look dead. He says, turning on the water. I hear him begin to brush his teeth and decide to get his bag ready. I put his, I put his laptop, some binders, and a bunch of pencils in there. Also put his water in the side of his bag for him as he comes out of the bathroom. Ready to go? Yeah. 
he says as we walk out of the dorm. We walk down the hallway and get to the main building after about ten minutes of walking. Well, sorry. I just pulled something out of my mouth. I grab a few snacks out of my bag and hand them to Coda. Damn it. Hand them to you. I keep saying Coda because that's the name I usually use, and I'm trying not to use it. And Coda is also the name of my man OC, and I use his name way too much. So it's just like an instant reaction to do. Sorry. He thanks me, and we part ways to go to class. Okay. You're POV. I walk to my class, trying to avoid some people in the way. Bullying doesn't stop after high school. Oh, no. It carries on to college. But the teachers don't do anything about it because we're adults now, and we need to find our own way to resolve the issue. Or some bullshit like that. I twitch, cursing aloud as my tics went crazy for a second. Not gonna mimic that, because I feel as though that would be offensive. To people with actual Tourette's. Please let me know if I am allowed to do that, because I don't really don't want to be offensive. <sighs> so y'all can just imagine uh, your ca male character talking like that. I say out loud, your tics are one of the rare ones which you curse. I think it's rare. Anyway, I hated being around cr large crowds. It was like I was always being watched and judged for who I am. Feeling a bit nervous, I pick up my pace. That is when I'm stopped by Adrix. He was a six foot two male with the usual bully look. He had green eyes, blonde hair, and usually pick on kids that have a lower status than him. Me included. Well, if it isn't the little numb freak, he says while kicking me down. The blow knocked the wind out of me, so it took me a few seconds to breathe normally. What do you want, Adrix? I asked, pissed off. Honestly, I just wanted to get this day over with. Then I heard it. That damn buzzing again. That thing. I mutter. If you have something to say, spit it out, runt. He says. Adrix yells. Suddenly, I felt as though I wasn't in control of my own body. Almost as if someone else had taken it over. Yet, I was still aware of what I was, of what I was doing. I deliver a hard punch to the side of a hard blow to the side of Adrix's face. The impact on the ground splitting his eyebrow. He gets up and holds it, trying to stop the bleeding while hissing in pain. Stay away from us. If you try and hurt us again, the punishment will be much worse. I could see the pure the look of pure terror in Adrix's eyes. And the eyes of other students. Who are you? I stay silent, giving him death glare. He storms off, still holding the side of his face. Students were still staring at me, making me uncomfortable. What? I yell. They all basically scatter, going into different classes. I almost said classes. <laughs> this was going so well. Ah, it was going so well. I go to my classroom and sit down. I knew I would be in trouble later, but I still didn't know what had caused that. Are you okay? I hear a voice ask. I look around to find no one talking to me. Who the hell? I muttered to myself. I get no reply and focus on the teacher, who had just entered the room. Okay, class. Oh, wait, that's a male. Sorry. Okay, class. Today we will be focusing on physics, too, he says. I'm going to add a sentence. The students groan as, yeah, the students groan as we all are forced to take out our papers. I grab my physics two papers and begin taking notes as class starts. When halfway through the class, the, two, the, the announcement comes on. Will, will your name, last name, please come to the office? Your name, last name? <laughs> it says, I sigh as a few students give me a dirty look. I walk out and go down the hall. You're gonna get hurt if you go there now. Walk into the bathroom and lock the door. I hear the I hear a voice say, "What? Just trust me." 
I decided not to take any chances and go... Sciences? Really? I decided to not take any chances and go into the family bathroom and lock the door. A couple minutes later, I hear the announcement come on again, but this time, she seemed more scared and in pain. Uh, attention, students. Please remain calm. The building is now on lockdown. There are intruders somewhere in the building. Please stay hidden and stay quiet. I wish you luck, and please stay, 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 stay safe. I said, stay, stay. <laughs> this is supposed to be serious. <laughs> I look around and I look around and look I look around and look at the bench. It was movable, so I block the door with it. I turn off the light and go to the corner of the door. So if someone did manage to get in, I would still be hidden. I hear a, I hear loud footsteps coming down the hallway and I look at the light underneath the door. I see a pair of shoes outside the door and try and stay my breathing as I hear two gunshots. Because one of them goes to the door of the bathroom. <clears throat> Making two small holes of light. Person looks in, doesn't see me. He walks away. He walks away from me, from the door. See that vent over there? Open it and crawl through it. It'll lead you outside. I hear the voice say. I look around and find the vent. It was already loose. Most of the screws were already loose or gone. I unscrew the loose ones, prying in the vent cover off. Entering... I crawl military style through the ventilation. A few minutes later, it gets pretty dark, rendering me unable to see. I bump into something as I hear it growl. I feel a hot breath on my face, feeling droplets of something fall onto my face. I back up a bit, but hear the tapping of claws on the surface of metal. The tap sounded familiar to dog paws, but what would a dog be doing in the ventilation system? Stop, it says in a demonic voice. I continue backing up, but feel something roll, warm roll down my forehead. I reach out in front of me, trying to touch whatever the thing was. I felt nothing as I hear quick tapping. Slowly, uh, slowly but surely, I make my way out of the system, reaching the end of the vents. I kick open the outside hatch and crawl out and look around. I was surrounded, not by police, but strange figures. I couldn't help but notice a certain one. He had brown hair and orange goggles. He seemed familiar, but from where? I feel a hand on my shoulder. As I look back, I see a hooded figure with a black and red mask. My reflexes kick in, and I elbow him in the stomach. He groans and falls over. A male with a white hoodie covering most of his face throws a knife at me. I feel a blade dig into my shoulder, but I couldn't feel the pain. I maintain a straight face and pull the knife out. I keep a good grip on it, getting into a fighting stance. My eyes land, suddenly land on a large, husky-like dog with wild eyes. It growls in a very familiar growl. It barks in a demonic tone and jumps at me, attempting to tackle me. It knocks me down and, as I plunge the knife into its side, making it whimper and fall over in pain. I quickly stand up, and taking the knife from its side. A few figures step up and try and fight. D -d Don't come any, any cl close, sir. I stutter out. I see the boy with orange goggles begin to twitch. I suddenly see something flick out of the corner of my eye. And soon after, my vision begins to blur and, I be and my eyes become heavy. I put, up my I put a hand on my head, feeling something poke my arm. I feel around my neck and pull something out. Looking down, I see a needle with no substance. I could barely stand up at this point, and ended up falling onto one knee. I drop the knife in my hand, digging it into the ground. As I begin to pass, slowly pass out. F fuck. No. I say tiredly, completely, and I completely collapse onto the ground, still barely conscious. I see the people begin to walk towards me, the faceless being, picking me up with, ten with long tendril-like appendages as it be completely unconscious. Get ready for the next chapter because it's going to be pretty great. So I'm not going to read the next chapter because I'm still working on it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and or subscribe. This is the, this is my profile for my animation channel. 
and I will, may or may not put that in the description. I don't know yet because I have only posted one video. I'm gonna actually put it in the description. I'm gonna put this Wattpad account in the description as well. I really hope you guys have a gr an amazing day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.